Right, hello and welcome back to the last of the Niagara videos that I'll be doing for a while. Um, today we're going to be having a look at making our own Niagara module. So um, one of the big kind of key features of uh, Niagara over Cascade is that every single one of these, these modules um, that, that comes pre kind of loaded with the engine, um, it's all just code that we can go in and edit. So if I just take this sphere location and open it up, double click on it, we go into a Niagara module script very similar to kind of like a blueprint uh, interface um, uh, and you can see we're getting information getting if conditions all sorts of things it's quite complex um, but this code um, is what's creating that sphere location um, for us so you can go in and edit these or see how they're done uh, or write our own so we're just going to be making a very simple little module script of our own just to see how the sort of UI works and the interface works um, and then I'll point you in the direction of a couple of further tutorials uh, which are really good and really helpful if you want to do uh, a bit more with your own modules. So first thing we're going to do is create a new Niagara module script. Um, I'm call this NM. Um, not sure what naming conventions is going to be uh, kind of uh, standard for Niagara, I tend to use any -E NS and M. Um, obviously, it's up to you. Uh, and we're just going to do a color by age, um, something really simple. Uh, and so, um, just as a quick example of, of how this works. So, um, so we get this UI. Uh, obviously, we get our work graph and then script system parameters, all this stuff down the side. Pretty similar to kind of the blueprint layout. Um, and we're getting information from our particle systems so far. So in this case, uh, having our map get, um, we're getting the, the information that's already existing. And I want to get the uh, the color. No, I don't. I want to get the age. Start with the age. So I'm going to get the particles normalized age. So this is the um, the value that goes from zero to one, zero at spawn, one at death. Uh, and if I get that, you see it's grayed out here. This because we're getting the information from the input. Um, and then with our normalized age, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a parameter of my own, uh, and I'm just going to create a float. Um, if I do a new input to new floats, this now is because uh, it's in the input main namespace. Uh, this is going to be something we'll be able to edit in uh, Niagara um, for our, for our module, uh, and I'm going to give that a name and call it multiplier. Um, and then finally, uh, well. Next, I'm going to multiply these together. So the idea being that as the particle spawns, we get a value of zero, and then as it's death, we're going to get a value of whatever our multiplier is. Uh, and I'm just going to set the color of my particles. So here in my output, um, this is the information that's going to get passed on to the next module. Uh, I can do color again. So I'm going to do particle color. Um, I want to make a color. I don't want to just pass this data straight through. I want to be able to edit which parts of the color do I want. And in this case, I'm going to make a linear color. And I'm just going to plug this into the red. So over time, our particles are going to get redder and redder. And I don't want this alpha to be set to zero. I want the alpha to be inherited from the existing alpha. Uh, so the way we do that um, is to have a color input on this side, particle color. And I'm just going to break this to be able to get access to the information inside it. And I'm going to plug the existing alpha through to the other alpha. So whatever color we did before, our module is going to get overwritten. And it's just going to get replaced by this um, color multiplied by age. Obviously, this is something we could very easily do with the existing modules. But as an example of how to set up this and sort of the UI and workflow, um, I think it's quite a nice little simple, uh, simple module. So we'll just compile and save that. And I'm just going to create a very simple uh, system based on an existing emitter. And I'm going to use the hanging particles. Uh, NS color age. There we go. Um, and we're going to say in update, we're going to add our module that we just found. So by default, library only is ticked. So if I start typing in color, um, we're only going to find the existing ones that, um, that Epic have created. If I turn off library only, I can see here NM color by age. This is the one that I've created. Um, so if I change my multiplier to one, it's 
going to increase the size of my particles so I can see what's going on a little bit better. 50 is probably too big. Um, and I'm actually going to change the material as well to one that I've got that's got particle colour. There we go, and particle colour. So these are black squares, and over time the colour becomes red. And if I disable this, you can see we're just going to have white squares. Uh, and if I set my initial colour, let's say to be blue, if I turn this one back on again, you see that blue colour is going to be completely overwritten, and we get our red colour back. So we're not driving the colour of the particles by the colour from the modules anymore, we're colour driving it directly by the age, um, and we can create some quite cool modules um, to do whatever we want. Um, obviously if we put our multiplier up, it's going to get brighter and brighter because um, that's just multiplying by the age to give us our color values. Um, if we want to edit it, we can do so from here and we can create our own um, kind of modules here which can be shared between different emitters. Um, really powerful workflow. If you want to do anything slightly custom, uh, Cascade, obviously you were quite limited to what you could do um, unless you had a nice friendly programmer who could write modules for you. Now we have full access to any of the kind of like blueprint style uh, node based logic um, and we can create all our own modules which is really nice and really powerful um, cool mm -hmm. so finally scratch modules uh, what do they do well a scratch module is basically a workspace where you can demo and try out um, module scripts and then if you need to or if you want to, you can then apply them up to um, to your to your system, or save them out as their own separate things. So you have here again same input uh, and output um, settings. So uh, not actually sure. Here we are. Create assets. So in this case, let's do uh, I don't know same thing, but with a different color. So I get the emitter age, not the emitter age. Sorry, it's not. Uh, can I remove? Remove. Yep. It's a particle age, particle normalized age. Uh, into a float. Which I'm going to call multiplier. And I'm going to set the particle color. Oh, I'm going to make a linear color. And I'm going to make this into multiply these. apply these into the blue color in this case and I'm just going to set this alpha to 1 in this instance so that this is always set to be uh, to be 1 so then if I apply this I should be able to add my scratch module so in this case scratch module is going to be taking that from here upload multiplier up oh, set the multiplier to 0 there we go and there we are. And so you can use the scratch pad to quickly test out modules and apply them. Um, if you then want to create a asset from that, save it out as a Niagara module blue from age. And there we are. We've created this as an asset. So the scratch module, uh, or scratch pad, nice way of creating. Um, uh, kind of little preview um, or test modules and we can just go in and replace that now with our NM color blue from age and that's going to be the same same data so oh, my multiplier uh, is there a way to set the defaults default value one there we are and then we'll stop getting that error where everything's black um, so I appreciate that's a bit of a quick overview of how these things work. I've not had much opportunity to try it out myself, so I didn't want to dive too deep into it. Um, but uh, as a kind of like a quick workflow example, combining uh, our age and a multiplier together uh, to create a color, that works quite nicely. Uh, if you do want to know more, there are a couple of uh, tutorials that I would recommend. If you Google for Chris Murphy Niagara, uh, Chris Burvey is an evangelist for Epic and he's done a couple of really interesting Niagara examples. First one from GDC 2019, creating this 3D map 
based on uh, render target from the world um, some really cool things going on in there and similarly this one recently um, where the character uh, deforms and um, dissolves around this um, fence so a couple of really good um, examples of further uh, things if you want um, <coughs> cool that's it for this Niagara series for now. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, etc., let me know. Um, big thanks to all my patrons, as always, for supporting the channel and the things I'm doing here. Uh, and I'll see you all next time.